Oh, the sweet joys of boating and the things that can go wrong on the water. We sunk their boat. Things can go wrong at any time out on the water. We always have to try and do our best to be prepared for the unexpected events that can occur, just like some of the events that'll occur in this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. Speaking of unexpected events, one happened to one of our viewers this past week, Lynette Henry, when she won one of our Drainplug Mafia giveaways and wound up winning one of our Drainplug Mafia boat flags. We're currently in the middle of another giveaway right now. We're doing it from our video this past Sunday. If you haven't watched that Boneheaded Boaters yet, go back, take a look. I'll leave it on the end screen of this video. Leave a comment and a like for your shot to win as well, but let's get this week's episode started. Our first story to make the boating news this week is going to be when weather rolls in, which is exactly what happened to a crew of seven who was out enjoying a fishing tournament in the Gulf of Mexico this past week when lightning struck one of the outriggers on their boat. The lightning completely disabled their vessel. They lost all electronics and motors immediately after the strike. There were seven people on board the vessel at the time of the incident, including a pregnant woman, and somehow miraculously, all seven people who were located on this vessel, which happened to be approximately 100 miles offshore at the time of the incident, were successfully rescued without any serious injuries. This rescue is aided by the fact that the vessel actually had an EPIRB on board, so the crew was able to activate the EPIRB and let the Coast Guard know their exact position, but this wasn't the only rescue that occurred in the Gulf of Mexico this past weekend. In fact, I've been sent multiple videos from other viewers showing the scene this past weekend out in the Gulf. There were lots of boats caught off guard by these storms rolling through. One of the viewers who sent some videos in actually told me they talked to the Coast Guard when they got back to their home marina after exiting the Gulf in one of these heavy storms. They mentioned that the Coast Guard member that they spoke to had claimed that over 15 EPIRBs had gone off in just the past few hours, and there were currently multiple rescue operations underway in the Gulf for several vessels that had sunk and multiple vessels that had become disabled in the storm. This particular crew witnessed several water spouts, hail, and they said at one point in time they were experiencing six to eight foot seas. This crew fortunately was able to successfully make it back into their home base without any major injuries. They did mention they stuffed the bow several times and at one point in time they did have to put everybody into life jackets just to make sure everybody was going to be safe as they were making their way back in. If you've never actually experienced something like this, it really is a very trying situation. Coastal boating can be a risky situation, especially when you get far offshore. We can watch the weather all we want and try and predict these things and do our best to be prepared, but the reality is when you're this far offshore, you're not going to have cell phone service. So storms will gradually pop up throughout the day especially if you don't have any kind of radar or GPS weather indicators, things can turn quickly and you'll find yourself oftentimes running from the storm. And it just serves as a reminder that if you're going to do offshore coastal boating, make sure you have the proper equipment for that. It is definitely a different kind of experience and a different equipment set required to do this than it is just to go fishing out on your local lake. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to Lake Altoona in Georgia, where just a little over a week ago, this was the scene. Oh man, this is not good. Local Georgia Department of Natural Resources officers were out patrolling the lake when they spotted a vessel riding extremely low in the water. They quickly believed that the vessel was either overloaded or misloaded a little bit too heavy in the bow. And as they were following this vessel, hoping to make an approach on it and possibly approach them and make sure everything was okay, the vessel actually capsized. The vessel that was in distress was carrying eight passengers, including several small children and the family's dog. DNR officers were able to quickly respond to the scene since the vessel actually capsized right in front of them. They were able to quickly toss flotation devices out and help pull the people from the water and bring them on board their vessel. Now some of the videos we showed earlier in this actually showed what can happen when things go wrong out on the water that are visibly wrong. Like when you see a storm moving in, you know you need to be prepared. But this is why you got to be prepared in all situations. This family was just cruising along and probably thought nothing of it. Nothing was wrong. And the next thing they know, everybody's in the water. This is why you should always make sure you have life jackets on board for everybody in the vessel and have easy access to them. The only thing that's worse than not having life jackets on board a vessel for everybody is having them but not having them in a quick and easy enough access location to be able to get them out in an emergency situation. And always be sure before you depart on any trip, it doesn't matter who's on your boat, whether it's people you know and are there all the time or new people, show everybody again exactly where all the flotation devices are. Fortunately, in this situation, as you can see, almost everybody had quick enough access to grab one. Some sort of device, whether it was the correct one or not, they were able to grab something to help support them. 
And something you'll hear several people mention in this video as they're being rescued is that they need to grab their bags. It's always important to have what I call a ditch bag as well. In other words, if there's really important items such as money, IDs, credit cards, things that you need to get off this vessel in an emergency and quickly, go ahead and put it even in one Ziploc bag, something where somebody is responsible for grabbing that one bag if things go wrong. It really does make life a whole lot easier if it's the only thing you have to focus on is that. But fortunately in this situation, DNR is able to rescue the entire crew, including the dog, as we'll see here in a moment, out of the water, and everybody is okay. One of the wilder parts of this story, and I haven't got 100% verification on this, but it was something I was told by somebody else, this crew's day was not done here. The DNR officers you see here rescuing this crew actually just a few hours later responded to an incident at a boat ramp where there was an actual active situation where somebody was threatening other people at the boat ramp and they had to disengage that situation as well. Quite a wild day for this crew. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. If you ever see anything crazy happening out on your waterways, be sure to hit me up on Facebook Instagram and let me know and you might see your stories over here. Just like Josh Guy, Kevin Reamer, Jason Bush, Lauren Rita, Lynette Henry, and Mark Mary you did this week. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button here.